Okay, so I'm back in my studio and I've got my Octatrack here. Um, and I made a little video oh, about a month ago, maybe. Um, and it was all about uh, using long samples and uh, setting up the scale, scale setup um, to allow that on the Octatrack, to allow for super long samples and stuff like that. Um, so I had some requests to actually have audio examples because it was a really short, real basic video and I've decided to sort of do that but also just expand upon um, just looking at scale setup and looking at different ways to use the Octa track in that way. Um, so I've got this track here which is I think one of the ones I was sort of looking at initially and um, if we go to the scale setup, I've got uh, it's on 64 steps, it's on uh, times 8 and it's at 512 maximum steps. And so what that means is um, 512 maximum steps is like how long the entire pattern runs for. And the reason you set that is because at the moment I've got the octa track set to per track scale mode, which means that every track can have its own scale settings, um, which is really handy. Uh, it's a really cool thing to have. Um, the Digitact has it, but in a kind of limited way. The Analog 4 also had it, but it's, again, it's limited. Um, <clears throat> and the Mono Machine and the Machine Drum don't have it. Which is, like basically the Octa Track is the one that has the most powerful sequencer in this way. Because each track can have, legitimately have its own length. Um, they can have, uh, there's a whole bunch of different settings it can have for um, whether or not, like if I go into the settings, we've got pattern settings per track or, or normal. Um, we've also got, for each individual track, we can have settings. So we can have uh, plays freely. We can have one shot track, uh, trig mode, trig quantize. And these things are also available in a different menu um, where it basically shows you the different types of trigs you can have. And if you go down the list, you can notice the trigs change based on these things. So there's no record trig, so there's nothing there. But if I added one, there it would be. You can see it on there. So anyway, that's sort of like a whole different story, which maybe I won't go into right now. But um, what I'm going to show you is I've got this pattern. And it's a very long pattern. Um, there we go. You can see it's quite long. And if we go to attributes, it's 32 bars long, which is quite long. Um, and I don't actually think it plays through the whole thing. We can check that in a second. But we've got it 512 steps. We've got it um, across 64 bar, uh, 64 steps, but at like one eighth the speed or whatever. So if I actually, if I stop this and I press play. see how slowly that's going along and if I just as a demonstration if I go over here and put this back up to one and then it restarts because it's you know way shorter then because it's so much slower, oh, so much faster, sorry. But if I put it on this back, this uh, one eighth time again, and I do it. And if I go to the viewing window, the sample view, you can see it playing the sample. We can also see down here, it go through the steps. So we're not even we're not even halfway through the steps and it's quite a ways through the sample because of how slow it goes. Now we're halfway through. So I think it's gonna get to the end, I think, and then it's gonna loop back around. Play, so it's going to play the whole sample, all 32 bars. And then we 
back to the beginning. So, <clears throat> so you can see that that's, you know, that's how you play really long samples. You could play samples longer than that because, uh, well, actually, no, you, you can't. I will, <laughs> this is where it gets complicated because there are ways to play samples longer than that. Um, you can have it so the uh, the trig um, is a one shot trig, and it just play. You can trig the sample, and it will play a sample, and it will never restart the sample. So it will always, it, like you could have a whole song play. You know, it will just play till it gets to the end of the sample. I don't really like to do things like that because it means you can't. You just don't have as much control over it. Um, I prefer to loop things. Um, and looping things means uh, you often have to have them a lot shorter and I think 32 bars is pretty much the, the maximum length you can have and the reason for that is is because <clears throat> when 64 steps are at 1 8th time um, 5 12 steps is kind of the maximum number a sample will play for before it loops um, and there are, the reason why you can have longer master times um, in fact, it goes up to, I think, at 1024 steps. Um, but you can also just have an infinite time. And the reason for that is because that that's when you get into things like polyrhythmic um, setups where you've got each different track has its own timing setup. So you don't want it to restart at the end of any pattern length. You just want it to keep evolving because it's always going to change and it's always going to loop around um, in interesting ways based on what settings you've got in each of the track scale setup. And I realize that that's maybe not very clear when I say it like that, but that's why I've set up a new pattern over here to demonstrate some of these things. Um, so I've got this, I've got these patterns set up. Um, let's just go back to this. Um, I've just got three drum beats, three drum loops. Uh, they're all, I think, two bars long, two bars. No, that's four bars long. This one's two bars long. But I'm only playing 16 steps of them on each of them. Um, and we can check that out by going to the scale setup. Each of them has only 16 steps. Um, and they sound like this. So, you know, that's cool or whatever. But I've also set up another pattern here in which the scale setup is quite different for each of them. So this one only plays six steps before it go, before it loops around on itself. This one plays 13 steps before it loops around on itself. And this one plays eight steps. And you can see on the trigs uh, down here that each one of them, this one's only got six lit up because that's where it's looping. This one's got 13 set up because that's where it's looping and this one's got eight um, lit up because that's where it's looping. But down here, I've got the master set to infinite because like I said, I want I don't want it to get to the end of say 32 steps and then just start again. I want each of them to just keep evolving in their own way on their own time frame, and that's where you get some weird sort of polyrhythmic kind of stuff. Um, so with just these three, it's maybe not going to demonstrate it as well as maybe it could. Um, you could set up some really wacky stuff having uh, quite long um, step numbers uh, or number of steps and also maybe um, things that aren't beats. You could get some really interesting stuff with ambient textures and stuff. But I just set this up because I thought it would be an easy way to understand it. Um, so I've got these ones set up and let's see what they sound like. adjust this in real time as well so
so you get the idea. You can do some really interesting stuff. Um, and I think from a live music perspective, the oct- this is where the Octatrack sort of, well, this is one of the areas where it really fucking shines, you know. Um, so I've got all that set up and I just thought I would sort of run through that really quick. But the other thing I, I sort of set up before making this video was some scenes. Um, because the scenes using the crossfader are one of the most powerful things on the Octatrack. Um, it wouldn't be the machine that it is without scenes. Um, and I just thought I would set some up with these patterns to sort of really, you know, properly show you how fucking crazy things can get. Um, so I've got four over here and I've got three over here. And the way I've sort of um, set these up is in a way which I think is quite popular to set things up on the Octatrack where you use these nine scenes over here uh, oh, sorry, eight scenes over here for um, the B, scene B and scene A is for these eight ones over here. And you sort of like flick between them. So at the moment we're set on this one over here and this one here. So you slide to that one. Then you select that and you slide back to that one. Then you select that and you slide back to that one. Then you select that and slide back to that one and so on. And you can, you can just evolve something just infinitely, um, seamlessly as well. Um, and I'm not sure if on this one, I've really set it up in a way where I wanted to demonstrate something that genuine, like to, that sort of genuinely evolves. I just set up different scenes um, to demonstrate different aspects of the machine um, and how crazy you can dras- like how drastically you can change the sound. So let's, uh, we're back to the scale setup of 16 on each one. So let's have a listen to this. Oh, I also forgot to mention um, on here, over here, I've got the three three sample tracks. I duplicated them over here, but on this side, I chopped them up into slices because you can have more control over the sound when you chop them up into slices. So they're chopped up into, you've got, you know, 16 slices playing and they do sound a bit different when you, when you chop them up. Um, they do sound a bit different. You'll notice a bit of stuttering between the, the slices. Um, it's kind of unavoidable in a way, unless you've got like a perfect length sample. And even then you still do often get clicking between them, which is a little bit annoying. Um, it can be, but it can also sound great. It just depends what you're going for. So anyway, without further ado, let's, uh, let's demonstrate some of these scenes. So you totally get the idea and what I'm going for there. And uh, basically what I've got going is that I've also set it up so that the scenes on this side correspond to um, the tracks on this side. And 
So if you notice on this first one, for example, when it fades between, fades over, uh, this side turns down in volume. If I go to this, uh, you can see, how do I do this? You can see that over here on this side, on this scene, these ones are muted. And then on this side, you can see that, this, that these tracks are muted and these ones are turned up. Um, so it basically just cross fades between them whilst also bringing in different effects. So I've got some filtering going on on, um, on each of these tracks. And uh, that basically allows, um, or the reason I chopped them up is so that each individual step would be affected by filtration and stuff, or each individual trig would be. Um, whereas if you've only got one, it's it's like this first one, which the filter envelope is affected by. So, you know, um, I think I've got a... So on that one, on these tracks, um, I've got the filter envelope affecting just the single trig. So it sort of like goes like this, you know, or maybe f uh, attacks up and then comes down with the decay. Whereas over here, each one is its own attack. attack uh, each one is its own attack and decay envelope. Um, and it does it stutteringly, you know, so like this. <laughs> So you get the idea. I'm just going to reload that. Um, so, what, I mean, what's cool as well with the Oxtrack um, is that I've got all this saved into one part and the scenes are all saved to parts as well. So if I go to do a different pattern where I've got the different scale setups, all of these scenes still correspond um, to all of the tracks that I've got set up. So if we go back and you'll remember these, you know, they're all set up in weird different scales. Um, and these are set up on different weird scales as well. So because these are set to the same scales that um, these tracks were initially, but then I changed them, it's going to be completely whacked out. So let's, uh, well, <laughs> I don't want to overstate it because I haven't tested it yet, but I think it's going to sound pretty crazy. So let's listen. I love as well that each spot along, like it's anywhere along the slider, you get a whole new different setting, you know? So, <clears throat> that'll probably do it for this video. I um, just wanted to say that that's a really cool effect that I like a lot, is the tape sort of slow down to a stop effect, which if you put the rate to zero um, on every single track, 
you just you get that and it's and i just love it so much it just sounds so cool so if i go back to the initial track and i just keep this one on this one i mean come on it's rad right <laughs> so that's gonna do it for this video um you know i would really love it if you liked and subscribed to my channel and uh you know, commented on my stuff, give me some feedback, tell me what I'm doing right, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, I welcome it. And uh, if there's anything specific you want to see, then just tell me. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it. I'll see you later.